and the glory of God. We come to you this morning from Second Friendship Missionary Baptist Church where Rodney Williams is our pastor. And we are located at G60 46 Clio Road in Mount Morris, Michigan. Come join us, come be a part of us. Um, even though the pandemic of COVID is still rising, we still need to think and consider Jesus, our faith, who is the coverer of those that trust in him, who yeah. is the one that will hide you when your strength is no longer weak. Today at our church is usually youth day, and I dedicate this to the youth and to the church, this lesson today, because we still need the Lord. We cannot get along without him. And our lesson this morning, today's date is August the 9th, 2020. And you should bless the Lord at all times if you are still yet on top of the ground. He has a purpose and a plan for you. Our lesson this morning will be coming out of James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27. And I'm going to be reading the New Living Testament version, but I want to pause to move me, this body, this person out of the way so that the Lord will come forth and plant a seed in someone's soul or their spirit, and they will come crying, Lord, what must I? Because faith and, and accepting God is an individual thing. What must I do, Christ, to be saved? Because truly it's all about God. I want to pause right now. Father God, I thank you. Yes. The God of the heavens and in the earth. Uh -huh. I thank you for the wake up call, Jesus. Yes. I thank you for looking beyond all my faults, my mess, my words, my actions, and seeing my needs. I thank you, God, for being my judge and my advocate, Father God. I thank you, God, for being my comforter and my peacemaker. Father God, go with us today here at Second Friendship and lead and guide and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Lord, bless the people traveling on the highways and the byways. Put your hand of mercy on them. Guide them safely to their destination, Father God. Bless the sick and the shed in wherever they may be, Jesus. Cool their fevers and comfort their minds. Bless the people that are in the jail cells, Father God, because truly now it is all about getting our house in order, Father God. 
Go with us, your children, Father God, and lead and guide and direct us, Jesus. Bless every church door that's open this morning in your name. Those that are putting the word out there, Father God, those that are just working in the vineyard for you, Jesus. Lord, we can't do it all and we don't know it all, but through it all, you can provide for us and guide us if we allow it. Father God, bless the shepherd of this house and his family. Pray that a seed will be planted in this lesson in someone's heart and they will accept you as their personal savior. Put me down, sit me down so that you may come forth. This prayer I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. I'm going to read the New Living Testament, and it's James chapter 1. And if those that are having their King James Version will follow along, the New Living Testament sort of breaks it down and make it basically more simpler. And it says in James 1, 19, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness of God's desire. Uh -huh. Verse 21, so get rid of all that filthy and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your soul but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what he says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and you forget what you look like. Put it, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. God will bless you. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Amen. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for the orphans and the widows in the distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. It is all about hearing and doing the word of God. And it's all about your individual faith. We've been talking about wisdom. We've been talking about faith. We've been talking about God and how he forgives, but it's all up to you. In our outlines today, we're dealing with behaving the word of God, living by the word of God, and representing the word of God. Uh -huh. Now, the New Testament, this particular book, was written by James, Jesus' brother. And he was addressing it to the Jewish converts living outside of the Holy Land. Also, the Jews of the dispensation, even though James was addressing it to the Jews and they were the people that thought they were perfect in everything they did, it also applied to the Gentiles, which were the people that they felt were unclean. And the main thing of this is our practical religion manifesting itself in our good works, meaning our everyday religion yes. manifesting itself in our good works. And what that means is if you have done something that's inappropriate, something that's wrong, something that you feel is bothering your spirit, then you need to go and correct that because you are going to have to answer to God. Looking, and it also means that looking at your profession of faith and offering instructions for godly living. The Bible that we teach from and we read every day 
is our instructions for heaven, for seeing Jesus. And we have a young um, lady here that sometimes uses the letters to break it down to mean different things. But biblically, it's all about everyday living and our instructions. Yes. And see, we talk, people talk a good game. And talk is cheap. People read and talk about doing good, but they find it difficult to help the most vulnerable in society, which is the widows and the orphans. Yes. People that don't have nobody to help them. People that are on the corner, even though they have the homeless sign, I am a veteran, I am a homeless person, I am a this or that. If God puts it on your heart to help that person, then do what the Lord would have you to do. Uh -huh. Most people are always hearing things the wrong way. And we have to listen with our spiritual ears. Yes. The ears, our ears are our gates to communicating with God and with people. And our eyes is our gate. And our mouth is also a gate. It talks about the tongue. It talks about the eyes and it talks about lust. We're going to get into our lesson and break it down. But I want to let you know how important it is for you to have your ears to hear. Your ears make the major task of your ears is to detect and transmit stuff. Your ears hear and it transmits. And your ears also maintain a sense of balance of hearing and connecting with the world. Yes. Those that cannot hear, they are not balanced. Those that need hearing aids, they have to have them in in order to hear so that they can transmit and stay connected to the world. In our lesson verses 19 and 20, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. That particular outline is saying that your behavior is what it's all about. The Jewish people back in the days of James, which was Jesus, Jesus' brother, were being persecuted. They were being persecuted and, and they needed a word of comfort from the Lord. And persecution can be slander. It can be violence. But the book of James was talking about wisdom and how they can obtain it. And they can obtain it through God. And here it says the believers are facing persecution for their faith in Christ. As James offered up his instructions, he most likely based it on a combination of wisdom scriptures, such as Proverbs 10 and 19, and Ecclesiastics 5 and 2. Wisdom is what you need to be able to do the things that you need to do. But yes. first of all, you need to listen. And, and as I dedicate this lesson to the young people, that's a bad habit that Amen. some young people have because they think they got it all and they know it all. But how could you know and you haven't been there? So James had been among the inner circle of Jesus and he was being taught how to reach people, how to teach, how to get prepared to heal people. Jesus had an inner and an outer circle. So we have to think about that in our lives. Listening to someone much older than you is okay because that's when you obtain or get your wisdom. Yes. Wisdom lectures were captured in the scripture and it was passed down. Like if someone was lecturing you in the family, they're talking about the scriptures and how good God has been and how he brought me a mighty long way on a can of pork and beans and, and uh, what you call them, hot dogs. But young people don't listen to that. And that's wisdom being 
being put down or, or given to you from an older person. And that's what James was trying to do to capture the Jews' hearing, meaning their ear gate. Listen, listen. And it said it was passed down orally, meaning talking, as families met in churches or in synagogues. And they talked in their homes. James, the brother of Jesus, heard this talk or language growing up. So he was taught that too, that you have to listen first and then do the will of God because it's your individual soul that you have to account for. So now they wanted to revive this talk and instruct them in the culture of the day to usher in a new era. James knew that he was back there during the older days. And if it worked for Papa, if it worked for Grandma, then why can't it work for me and you? Man. Right now in 2020. And that's what he was saying to the people, the, the Jews specifically. Then he was saying that the purpose of, of reviving such language and instructions in the culture of his day is to usher in a new era. And he said, with, with wisdom from the old. You got to listen to some old people sometimes. You don't know anything, young people. That's what's wrong. You got to hear. Even in the classroom, somebody know more than you do. And all you have to do is open up your gate, your ears to hear it. And James was also saying, he was reminding the readers that anger does not produce the righteous living that God desires for his people. You can't get mad when somebody is stepping on your toes or they have told you the truth and it hurts. All you have to say is, ouch, you hit me in the right place by telling me the truth. And, and, and I'm working, God knows, diligently with my three younger grandchildren on truthfulness. It doesn't hurt to tell the truth because it frees your soul. If someone is concerned enough to talk to you about how to get your life in order and how to do the right things, if someone has stopped in the middle of their day to apply themselves to you and your life, that means they love you and they care. And James, the brother of Jesus, was concerned about these Jews in Jerusalem because they were being persecuted. Slander, violence, everything was going on. But the word of God needed to come forth. Then it said in the book, as the word of God is planted into hearts, it brings about a transformation into the true kingdom living and God's way of doing things and being. If you would allow your heart to be open and surrender yourselves and your ways to Jesus, you will see things better because your eye gate will give you understanding, you will hear it better, and then you can do it better. But it comes with listening, young people, and some older people too. We have to do what the Lord say do. An uncontrolled emotion, when your emotions are all over the place, it's like a loose bullet. Once the bullet leaves the chamber, where does it go? You don't know. If your emotions are not under control, you have not harnessed your emotions and how to deal with them, you are a loose cannon, a loose bullet. We have to pray every day and ask God for wisdom, for knowledge, and for understanding. And that's what we have been preaching and teaching here at Second Friendship, at least since I got here. And that's what we need. And then in our second uh, outline, it talks about, so get rid of the filthy and evilness in yeah. your lives yeah. and humble, humble yourselves and accept the word of God has planted in your heart. And yeah. it has the power to save your soul. You should be working on your own soul salvation, not somebody else's, your own personal soul salvation. 
You can only save you, and the way you save others is what you do and how you do it. That's how you pull them in. You can only be accountable for you, your soul, and then once you start showing them, oh, hallelujah, how good God is and has been to you, then that's nothing but a drawing card for them. And that's how we have to be as saints of God. We have to be kind. We have to surrender stuff. We have to eat stuff, meaning evil ways, evil words, meaning I, every word that somebody say to you evil, you don't have to respond. You don't have to respond back. You don't have to get the last word. And then it said in verse 22, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. You have to live in the word of God. And that's hard for some of us because we want to do it our way. James loved the children and the followers of Christ. And we should be loving ourselves and our family. And we should be acting on things. And what that means is when we act ACT on something, our attitude should change. Man. Changes should be seen. Change. And things should be working out. Yeah. ACT, act. Our attitude should be changed. Things should be changing in our family circle and things should be working out. Amen. And then if you ask yourself when you're at home why things are not working out, you have to point the finger this way. And it said James continued his discourse by providing additional instructions mm -hmm. on managing one's emotions. He appealed to the readers to put away worldly lifestyle and behaviors and to welcome gladness and humility. Yeah. Everybody want to be like the world. He got it, she got it, I want it. Uh -huh. You don't necessarily need it. It might not fit you. You might be a big girl trying to get into a two. <laughs> you might be a young man trying to get into a 20 and you're a 40. Amen. Be who you are, who God made you to be. Listen, as our lesson says, listen and do the word of God. And then James was just one person at that time, but he was doing the will of God that God wanted him to do. And it said, behavior to welcome humbleness and gladness. Um, and then he had planted inside of them that humbleness and gladness by the Holy Spirit. Yes. That, that was God planting that in, in him, in the people. As the word of God is planted into hearts, it brings about a transformation uh -huh. into the kingdom living and God's way of doing things. That's how we should be acting or walking. Acting meaning our attitude change, things change, and we change. And transformation is just like a butterfly. I once was young and now I'm old. Meaning, that's a transformation. A butterfly is in this cocoon. Amen. And then it has to morph into something with wings. Amen. That's how we should be as children of God, as Christians, as followers of God. We don't have time, no more down here, to be about somebody else's business and what they're doing. Make sure your walk matches your talk. Make sure you put arms and legs to the word of God and walk it out. Make sure you show somebody in what you're doing and where you're at and how you're doing that this is all through, through the glory of God. It's not me. It's what God has put in me that makes me who I am. Yes. And it said, do not be worldly lifestyle and worldly fashion. Yes, people, it's okay to have clothes. It's okay to have a nice car, but you don't have to do everything somebody else do. Amen. You have to be who God made you to be. And then in our lesson, it talks about James used the illustration to further drive home his point of how can one engage in self-deception 
about righteous living. When a person look in a mirror, he or she sees an image for a moment, but when they walk away from the uh, mirror, the image is forgotten. I was gonna have a bunch of mirrors around here this morning so that I could see my image because every day that God allows us to get, it, get up, your eyes are growing a little dimmer. Yeah. Your hair is getting grayer. Your walk is slowing up. It's time to get in line and live the way God wants you to live. Yes. You may not get it perfect down here, but at least get it right. Amen. Because you have to have a concern for who's coming behind you, which is your children and your grandchildren. And then in our lesson, I'm going back to the verses or the scriptures. It says, if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself and you walk away and forget what you look like. Amen. Because the mirror is going to truly show you the real reflection of who you are. Amen. And you can ignore it. But you can't keep ignoring it because time is going to wind up. Wrinkles are going to come. You know, eyesight is going to get dimmer. Yes. So that means you need to start applying the seed or the word of God that he has put in you. And then it says in verses 25 through 27, where we're talking about representing, meaning walking the word, it says, but if you look carefully, into the perfect law that sets you free. And if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for your doing. He will bless you for your doing, for your trying, for your work. If you claim to be religious, but don't control all of your tongue, Amen. you are fooling yourself. <clears throat> And your lesson is worthless. Your religion is worthless. Your reading is worthless. Word. Your Sunday school is worthless. Your time coming to church is worthless. Man. Let me read that one more time. If you claim, Word. oh hallelujah, to be religious, wow. but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Amen. Pure clean, righteous, genuine religion. In the sight of God the Father means caring for the orphans and the widows and their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. It's as simple as that. You have to represent God in everything we do. We have to not let evil flow from within us we have to not let filthiness and defilement or dishonor not flow from us. Uh, we have to represent the true and living God. Yes. We have to be on time all the time with God. And it says at one time or another, we were all guilty of only talking a good game. When it comes to living according to godly principles, representing the best of Christ in our sphere of influencing and being concerned about the world around us and having good intentions. We were all there of having good intentions and we were all guilty of talking. And then it says on being more helpful to those in need. But in today's lesson, James calls us to not just be hearers of the word, but also Carry, carry, carry it about in our lives daily. Yes. Carry it about every day in our lives and in uh -huh. our thoughts and in our deeds. That's what James is telling us today. Man. And this was 2,000 years ago, class, and they still preaching the same thing. Carry it with you every day. Often we get stuck because there is so much to be done. It can be an overwhelming task to change the world. We can't do that. 
We can't do that because we, we don't even want to change ourselves. When we embrace change, let's start embracing it in baby steps, little bit at a time. Lord, I'm changing. Taking one action at a time and doing it consistently. And that's how transformation takes place. I'm not here to, to, to preach to you as a preacher, but I'm here to challenge you young people and old people and middle-aged people and those that don't want to be old no more. God is calling us. He's calling us to a new era. And we need to get in line and start doing our part. And in closing, I'm going to say to the people at Second Friendship, really, really quiet yourself sometime and listen for God's yeah. instructions. Say it one more time. Really, really quiet yourself uh -huh. and listen to God's instructions to you every day and his word that he's preaching in you. And in your time of personal devotion and Bible studies, take time to be quiet before the Lord. Amen. And write down, write down what he is speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. It's not about him and everybody else when he's talking to you. It's about him and you, God and you. Write it down if you forget. I'm like that. I got little pieces of paper everywhere in my life. I'm challenging you, friendship. We need the Lord. As you listen to what God is telling you, take baby steps to move in God's direction. And wait and watch for changes to be transformed in your life if you would surrender your heart and listen and do what his word is saying make a conscious effort to access your habits and your behavior and your steps and what that means is make a conscious effort to think before you act to think before you do to think before you say make a conscious think about it effort i'm preaching and teaching this daily to my son and my grandchildren, and, and they still look at me like I'm the enemy. But I need God to hide me sometimes when my strength is not weak, and I know he will do it. I challenge you, second friendship, to trust that God has heard you and that his word will change your heart if you just yield to his ways. Amen. Hide me, God, when my strength is weak. In closing, hide me, God, when I want to take one more glance. Lord, I'm asking you to hide me. Even if the enemy, oh hallelujah, that you hide me from is me. But I need you, Lord. I need you to hide. I pray that something was said this morning that somebody will come crying. Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. My, my fire is hot, and I want to be changed, God. I want to trust you, God. I want to come and have you in my life, God. I can't do it by myself anymore. I pray that someone will walk in God's word. Hide me, God. When my strength is weak, Hide me, God, when I don't want to listen. Hide me, God, when I don't want to walk in your ways. Hide me, God. I'm asking you, God, to hide me. Hide me, God, when I do and say the wrong thing. Hide me, God, when I feel above everybody. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hide so that you may come forth, Father God, and see God in me. Hide when I don't make the right decisions, Father God. Hide me, God. Hide me, God. Hide me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
both hands and worship in this Lord. Lord, hide me in glory, in the secret place of your holiness. That's where I worship in my presence. 